Hiya, it's Davin here at Brewbits.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. Today I thought we would brew up some raspberry wine. Oh, beautiful. Oh, mmm. Anyway. Raspberries, lovely, gorgeous. Absolutely love them on pavlovas and things like that. But you can't beat them when you put them in wine. It makes a brilliant wine. So what are we going to need to make our raspberry wine? We're going to need three pounds of raspberries, three pounds of sugar. We're also going to need, um, I'm using here a general all-purpose red wine yeast. We need something to sterilize all our equipment, so I'm using sodium metabisulfate. We're going to need some pectolase, uh, we're going to need some yeast nutrients, and we're going to need some Camden tablets. When it comes to the equipment, we're going to need a bucket to brew it all in, as well as a demijohn. We're going to need a measuring jug, a funnel, a trial jar to help us when we're testing the specific gravity with our hydrometer, a thermometer, a long spoon for stirring everything, and more importantly as well, a straining bag. So, what do we do? Well, to get started, we need our brewing bucket, which I've already sterilized, and I'm quite simply going to pour in my three pound of raspberries. I now need to put on eight pints of boiling water, so I'm just going to put my kettle on the boil, and that's our eight pints. We're now going to give it a good stir. Mind you that your uh, lens is all steamed up, James. Okay, now we've given that a good stir. What we're going to do is pop the lid on. And we're now going to put this in a corner for seven days. Uh, for everything to start, uh, all the fruit to release all its lovely juices. Okay, we'll come back in seven days. Hi guys, for you it's only been a few seconds, for me I've had to wait a whole week till I got to here. So, let's take a look at our raspberries. Come on James, this is a really gorgeous dark deep colour in here. So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to strain them off. So I've done a little bit of preparation. And I've got myself a bucket. And in here I've got a, a straining bag, or you can use muslin. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna gently, because this red juice stains like anything, just pour it in. See how the raspberries have gone from a red to a pink, almost? Make sure they're all in there. Lovely, and I'm gonna leave that set and drip for, for a few minutes. Okay, our uh, raspberries have had a few moments to sit and drip. Let's uh, take our pegs off. Careful we don't drop it in. As you may have seen, there's still a bit of liquid in there, so I'm going to give it a little squeeze. Not too much. If you squeeze too much, you start getting a bit of pulpiness in there, and you end up having a little, quite a lot of sediment in the clearing stages. So I think that's about it. The next thing we need to do, is what I've got here, is I've got three pounds of sugar. And all we're going to do is just literally pop that in. We're going to give it a good stir. Come on in, James. Okay, as you can hear, you can hear all this grinding, this kind of raspy sound. Well, that's all the sugar that's in there right now. And you need to keep stirring this until it's all the sugar is dissolved. 
so you've got no more of this gritty sound and you can feel it gritty as well in the volume of stirring. Keep going till it's all dissolved. All the sugar is now dissolved, so I've taken a sample in my trial jar and with my hydrometer it's uh, coming out now at the specific gravity at 1.102. So, that tells me how much sugar we've actually got in our liquid. And more importantly, at the end, I'm going to be able to take another specific gravity reading. And simple calculation later, I'm going to work out exactly how much alcohol we've got in our wine. Okay, don't want to waste any of that. A couple of other things we need to add. Well, the first thing we're going to add is something called pectolase. Uh, you may also see it in recipes called peptic enzyme. And this is a um, white powder. Go ahead, James. I'll hold it over the top just in case we lose any. And what you need is one rounded teaspoon per gallon of juice. And all we do is plunk it in like that and give it a good stir. So, what's peptolase? What's peptic enzyme? What does it do? Well, Right in the beginning we use boiling water and when you heat fruits um, it tends to release a, a substance called pectin. And that's fantastic if you're making jam, it's what causes jam to set. But in wine it causes a haze, a, a, um, it doesn't cause any problems to, to the flavour but when you pour a, a bottle of wine onto a, a you know, nice crisp clean glass it just looks murky. Tastes good, just looks funny. Anyway, a couple of other things we need to add. Uh, we need to add some yeast nutrients. Um, basically, it's a, a vitamin for the, for the yeast. We all need our vitamins. And the ones I'm using is in the form of a tablet. So these are vitamin B1 tablets. And what I do is I put two onto a little teaspoon, using another teaspoon, put it on top, give it a little wiggle. You see it's crushed. And in it goes. We give that a stir. Last thing we need is our yeast. And here I'm using a, an all-purpose red wine yeast. And all we do is just spink it in on the top. And again, give it a good spin. All we need to do now is pop a lid on, press down two sides. This is now going to go into a warm place, about 20 degrees. So this is where your thermometer comes in. I tend to leave a thermometer on the top, just like that. Um, it tells me, make sure that I'm running at 20 degrees, if I'm running a bit cool, then I can raise it higher. If I'm running a bit warm, I can drop it down. Over the next three days, we're going to take the lid off and we're going to give it a good stir. Just once a day, a good stir. And then we're going to leave it for four days with the lid clipped on like this to do its thing. So in total, it's going to be another week. For the first three days, you're going to stir it. So the raspberry wines had a week in my one cupboard. Remember we were stirring it for the first three days and then the remainder four days it was going to be just left to do its thing. Well, come on in and have a look at this James. A beautiful pinkish reddish wine. The next steps is uh, we need to take our siphon, which I've sterilized, and we need a demijohn, which I've sterilized, and we're going to siphon the wine from the bucket into our demijohn. Okay, now in the bottom of the bucket there is some sediment. We want to do our best not to disturb that. But if we do disturb it, on the end of the tube here, I'm going to have a quick look at this, James. We've got a little end. And this is our sediment trap. And that just literally pops on. And that'll help us prevent getting any sediment down in the bottom. So all we do... Back in again, James, over to the bucket. 
We're going to take our sediment trap end and we're just going to put it just below the surface and then at the other end we're going to give it a good suck and get some fluid going through. Lovely. And then into the end of the demijohn and let it fill up. You need to take it up to the top of the shoulder and the bottom of the neck, just about this point. And it's almost there. Perfect. The next thing to do is prepare our airlock. And what we'll need is a rubber bung with a hole in it and our airlock. And that uh, marries up like so. Nice, good, snug fit. Now come on in, James, and notice this in the bottom of the airlock. I've got some liquid in the bottom of there. That's a sodium metabisulfate solution, and that's to help prevent any bugs, nasties, and bacteria getting in and spoiling the wine. But what it's also going to do is it's also going to give us an indication uh, as to when the wine's finished fermenting. Basically, as the yeast turns the rest of the sugar in the wine to um, alcohol, it will create carbon dioxide and that will push through and create bubbles. When you notice that the bubbles have stopped, um, you then need to check it with your hydrometer and you need to see if the specific gravity is the same for three consecutive days. As soon as the specific gravity is the same for three days running, then it's time to rack off your wine into a nice clean sterilized demijohn and get it ready for clearing. Once it's cleared, your raspberry wine then needs to go into bottles and it needs to sit in the bottles for about six months and then it will be ready to drink. So, the airlock's in my demijohn now. It needs to go back into my warm cupboard for at about 20 degrees for about another two weeks. It might take a little bit longer, it might take a little bit shorter, but that will depend on, on various different circumstances. So, about two weeks, and hopefully then you'll notice no more bubbles coming through the airlock, and then it's time to rack off. And you can check our YouTube channel, and that will give you another video on there showing you how to rack off. Hopefully, in a very short period of time, you are gonna have a gorgeous raspberry wine to drink. Beautiful color, it's gonna turn gorgeous and pink and rosy, but with that slight bit of redness to it. Enjoy.